Welcome to Branch Together. Today we're reading from Acts chapter 2. Uh, this chapter to me is, it's the church chapter. If you're looking for the basics, the essentials of what church is and what church, uh, church community was created to be, then this is the chapter. This is the church origin story and its purpose story. And as I read this chapter, I want you to think about or try to notice three things. First, listen to what the Holy Spirit is doing. The Holy Spirit is essential in the life of the church. And we really see the Holy Spirit at work and moving and, and pushing the community in this chapter. Also in this chapter, Peter is going to give a talk or a sermon where he explains what is happening. And he explains the good news about Jesus to all of these people who are listening. And as I read it, I want you to notice what information is essential to him in explaining this good news about Jesus. And third, listen in for the end of the chapter when we get a quick look into the practices of the early church. Try to remember and notice what their practices are. And at the end of the chapter, after I read, we'll talk a bit more about that. But before we dive in, let's take a moment and pray together. <clears throat> Lord, I thank you for your scriptures. I thank you for your servant, Luke, who was very intentional about gathering this story of, of the first church community. Uh, the eyewitnesses, the people he spoke with, um, all the testimonies and all the different things we hear. We, we just thank you for him and the work that he did so that we might uh, learn about this story and, and, and learn about the origins of how your church formed and how your Holy Spirit was at work and breathing life and moving this community. Help us listen today. Help us be changed today. Help us understand your Holy Spirit a bit better and be connected a bit more to you and your spirit as we read and reflect today. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Alamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, 
because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would be put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He has not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of, and of that all of us are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you both see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. All right, there's a, a lot of good stuff in this chapter. This, again, is the church chapter. Let's first, let's look at what we see the Holy Spirit doing. The Holy Spirit fills people and he gives people a special language capacity. This gift from the Holy Spirit enables people to hear what they are saying in their own language. This is an incredible story, right? The Holy Spirit comes upon the people in this upper room. There's these tongues of fire and things like that. And then they, they start talking and people from all different parts of, of the, like the Roman world are coming and they're hearing these words spoken in their own language. This gift from the Holy Spirit amazes some and causes others to think that the people are just drunk. It's also worth noting that the first church or gathering of Jesus followers are together in a room huddled away, trying to figure out what happens next. And the spirit comes to them and drives them out and takes them into the public scene. Okay, so that's what we see the spirit doing. Now let's come to the, the content of Peter's sermon. Peter says, listen up. These people aren't drunk, but they are fulfilling the scriptures. Joel said, Joel the prophet said, a day like this was coming when God's spirit will be poured out. Peter then says, listen up, hear these words. And then he starts talking about a man named Jesus of Nazareth. He mentions the mighty works and the power of Jesus. He says that Jesus did these things in their midst. This was a man who lived among them and did things that people witnessed. And then these people testified to what they saw Jesus do. Peter then claims that this Jesus from Nazareth did historically verifiable things. Peter says that this Jesus, by the plan of God, was crucified. Peter actually tells the people that they crucified him and he was killed by the hands of lawless men. Peter's message then declares that this Jesus was raised up, loosing the pangs of death. It wasn't possible for death to hold him. 
And then again, he quotes the Old Testament scriptures. Specifically, he talks about King David. Uh, and King David says this great kingdom, this David somehow knew that this great day was coming, that there was a king greater than him was coming. And David spoke cryptically about the resurrection even in his day. And this Jesus of Nazareth, God raised up. And of that, he says, we are all witnesses. Notice that again. Peter is declaring that he and all the other people, probably the 120 people in the upper room, are witnesses to the resurrected Jesus. Jesus, after his resurrection, is exalted to the right hand of God. That's what's going on in Acts chapter 1. Jesus ascends to be with the Father, and the Holy Spirit comes down to the church. And that is causing what is happening in this story. Peter then calls all of Israel to hear this. He says, everyone, hear my message. People are cut to the heart and they want to know what to do next. He says, repent, be baptized in the name of this Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the Holy Spirit. This is a great sermon, a great talk to go back to over and over again. Peter hits all the major components of the story and the good news of Jesus. Jesus was a man. He did signs and wonders. He was crucified. He rose again. He ascended to the Father, and then the Holy Spirit was given. Believe in this. The scriptures themselves foretold this. Believe in it. Repent, be forgiven, and receive the Holy Spirit. That's the message Peter gives. Lastly, see the last few verses where the first church comes together. There are some marks or components here that it's worth noting. These followers were committed to the apostles' teaching. They were committed to fellowship together. They were committed to breaking bread or sharing meals together. They were committed to praying together. They sold their possessions to make sure they could take care of one another. They praised God. It's a beautiful, beautiful chapter to see all the different things that first church did. In this chapter, we see the power of the Holy Spirit. We have a clear presentation of the good news of Jesus, and we see what the first church looked like. Come back to this chapter often. It gives us the foundations of the faith. So that's what I saw today. That's what I thought was important. What sticks with you as you read today? What did you find important? What was God saying to you as you read? As always, please feel free to share with us what you're seeing, what you're hearing, and the questions you have. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you again tomorrow as we branch together.